Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to be invited for this lecture. And um, I would like to ex express my gratitude uh, to the organizers of this conference as well as to the CMS nomination committee. Um, the subject of this talk is uh, dedicated what we can do and what we cannot do uh, with the Rietfeld method. And um, so I would like to introduce some uh, examples, some applications, of course, from a, from a very uh, personal point of view, and try to summarize and give a short outlook what uh, will be done or what can be done in the future with this method. Uh, the Rietfeld method, the history of the Rietfeld method started in 19. Uh, 67 and with a seminal paper in 19, uh, uh, 1969 and um, it was developed as a substitute, a substitute because of uh, Hugo Riedfeld had the problem to have only powders, what uh, the structure has to be refined and it was primarily developed uh, for neutron powder diffraction and the content, uh, the mathematical uh, apparatus uh, stems from the classical conceptions of crystallography and the kinematical theory of diffraction. Um, a central point uh, is the name profile refinement, and Hugo Riedfeld called his method profile refinement. The name Riedfeld refinement was given in the early 1980s by the Commission on uh, Powder Diffraction, uh, or a neutron, neutron powder diffraction because of uh, uh, something uh, was, some persons used the profile name in another sense. So um, if we put the Rietfeld method in the frame of methods who uh, use pro peak profiles to fit a pattern, we can uh, coarsely divide be uh, between the local peak search or peak uh, identification and the whole powder pattern fitting. And on the left side, we see methods that do not uh, em employ any structural information. The Pauli and or Le Bale method introduce uh, some constraints to calculate a certain number of peaks at no some number of positions, but the intensity is a free parameter. But the uh, whole powder pattern structure refinement, what we call the Rietfeld method, can be focused or can be defined by the need of a complete structure model. And so it, in principle it could or it can refine all structural parameters or at least it is uh, using this. There are clearly, clearly um, some, um, how to say, transitions to the other method because of uh, uh, the Rietfeld programs also allow commonly le uh, label fitting or something else. Um, the basic equation of the Rietveld method is based on the uh, calculation of peak intensities, HKL, or here it's labeled by K. And the only difference is that we are now smearing the intensity around uh, a certain angular range by a profile function. Here, it, uh, originally, it was a Gaussian function as the, in the uh, neutron powder diffraction this uh, Gaussian shape can describe the peaks very well. Um, some other uh, corrections have to be introduced, and so we can uh, uh, calculate the diffraction pattern step by step. Uh, a least squares procedure is used to minimize the differences between the calculated and the measured pattern, and um, this uh, is a nonlinear uh, algorithm, and it can be very complicated. Uh, to summarize how the uh, Rietfeld method works, we start with uh, uh, the elementary cell containing uh, just uh, the asymmetric unique. We apply symmetry information to fill the cell. We calculate peak intensities and profiles, um, and then a fitting uh, is running uh, to, by a variation and optimization of structural and other parameters to uh, reach a global minimum. And maybe we can also uh, employ the uh, scale factors, as these scale factors are uh, related to the cell content. 
they can uh, their ratio, and if we weigh this with the content of the cell, gives directly now the mass uh, fraction uh, of the phases in a mixture. Uh, the Riedfeld method is a very highly cited method. You see that uh, we have about 7,000 citations per year of, uh, uh, of the seminal paper. And um, the original uh, software was an algo code, and a Fortran code was distributed uh, in 1972. Uh, later, other software was developed. The first uh, important one was DBWS, uh, what uh, transisted the method uh, for X-ray powder diffraction. And later, uh, uh, the general structure analysis system for, of uh, uh, Von Drehler was introduced, full prof of Rodriguez Carvajal, uh, BGMN by Jörg Bergmann, and Topaz by Alan Coelho. But uh, of course, there are much more programs, important programs in between. This is just the most famous one, I think. Um, uh, during this uh, development of uh, new software, also new methods have been introduced or new models. Uh, one example is a so-called convolution-based peak profile. Um, we all know that um, a peak uh, is defined by influences from the wavelength distribution, the geometry of the instrument, and from our real structure of a sample. And the left part is not interesting for a refinement. If we can calculate it before, then we can focus definitely here uh, on the sample function in reciprocal space, and this makes the creation of models quite easy. Um, the possible goals of Riedfeld analysis are, of course, the traditional one, the crystal structure, what focus on the uh, uh, structure factors and the parameters like occupation, uh, X, Y, Z coordinates, and temperature factors here. Um, another application, possible application, is microstructure and textural information uh, taking from uh, the peak profile, maybe from the texture correction factors, or even uh, from the influence on the structure factors, for example, domain size, order, disorder, and texture. And of course, uh, the last application, the quantitative phase analysis. Um, let's focus on the crystal structure issue. Uh, I think the first uh, application of a structural refinement of a clay mineral was done in 1980 by Toraya. He refined, or his, his group refined, um, the crystal structure of nacrite, and uh, it was nice to see that uh, later some single crystal work was done and confirmed this structure very well. Um, another. Uh, much more important uh, work was the refinement of uh, the structure of kaolinite. Several trials have been done with neutron scattering. I think the, the best structure what has been published was that of Bisch and von Drehle. And it is important to see that it was done by a well uh, crystalline, uh, nearly perfectly, uh, perfectly crystalline kaolinite, the uh, kaolinite. And it's also interesting that this um, refinement was uh, successful even if we have a second phase inside uh, the presence of Descartes. Um, more uh, examples do exist. For example, here the uh, polygorskite polymorphs, what have been uh, refined first with laboratory X-ray powder data and then from synchrotron data. And also here it was... Uh, uh, important that this material always consists of the two polymorphs, the monoclinic and the autorhombic one, and so the Riedfeld refinement was the only alternative. Um, but unfortunately, um, it was we have some restrictions with a re a structural refinement for clay minerals. One example demonstrated here for chloride shows what can, may happen. A number of coordinates and maybe some bond lengths could not be reasonably refined. And this is due to this intensity misfit. This means our peak profile model cannot describe the reality and so it cannot put the intensity on the uh, right structure factors. Um, of course, we know that uh, there are a lot of alternatives in clay science. Fortunately, if not, we would not have uh, such detailed structural information. 
Um, so in clay science, uh, explicit pattern calculation and interactive pattern modeling has mostly contributed to our knowledge about the structure of clay minerals. But uh, if someone insists for any reason to apply the Riedfeld method, uh, the simply question arises, how can we model a pattern where the broadening of a group of reflections becomes bigger than ours? Um, uh, to uh, understand this, sorry for buffering you with textbook knowledge, we can distinguish some types of disorder in clay minerals. We can have well-defined stacking faults, maybe by translations or rotations. We can have random stacking faults, again, uh, planar turbostatic disorder. And we can have mixed layering uh, and maybe unfortunately, a combination of all of this in a real clay mineral. Um, this is just to have a, a grid uh, what we have to uh, uh, tackle with in, in our Ritfeld refinement. First, uh, consider this uh, more or less simple case. In reciprocal space, um, such um, a disorder uh, would result in uh, uh, this change from discrete uh, spots to uh, um, lattice rods or streaks in a uh, uh, sense of single crystal uh, work. And these uh, streaks or, or rods or ellipsoids uh, must be described. Um, we need uh, a conventional line broadening for this type class of peaks and we have to consider how these lattice rods can be described. Um, um, a very simple idea is um, to look in that direction and we see that the broadening of these peaks or that peaks here depend on the direction or the uh, or, or, or also orientation. And the most critical point is this here with H key uh, with a L with zero. Um, this results in such an asymmetric band and the simple idea was a workaround, an empirical description was to split uh, this uh, profile into two or more peaks, quite simple. Uh, and to do this, we need to define a line shift and a line broadening, and of course we have to refine the uh, intensity ratio of this both. But um, both, of course, these uh, parameters are related to the length and the orientation of this rod, but the parameters do not have any direct physical meaning. However, uh, this program, uh, this, this approach worked very well for the chloride. Here it is a conventional fitting, what is not very good, so RWP is high. Uh, and uh, here you can see the uh, fit with this model, it's much better. Um, uh, it may approximate the diffraction patterns of this chloride, but we have never tried to apply it for structural refinement because of, simply because of the structure is well known, but it was useful for phase quantification. Of course, the idea comes up to enhance this approach to more several disorder, for example, to introduce other classes of reflections. And if we do so, we have to introduce more and more and more parameters. And um, even if we do so and try to apply this model uh, for a kaolinite, for example, we see a nice fitting here, uh, uh, but of course uh, this fitting is uh, far from being satisfying. And um, even if we had to refine six parameters, the famous saying of a mathematist is that uh, with four parameters you can fit an elephant at, and with five uh, you can make him wiggle his trunk. Uh, obviously, our kaolinite is not one elephant. These are two or more or a family of elephants. <laughs> and um, uh, fortunately, um, the stru structure analysis of, oh, sorry, the disorder analysis of um, kaolinite group minerals is well uh, done in the 1980s and summarized in the famous textbook of Dirtz and Schuber. And the uh, um, most appropriate model, what may include the disordering features of many natural kaolinites, is to uh, have two types of layers, anantheromorphic layers. 
what can be stacked. And if you stack identical layers, you get kaolinite. If you get, uh, 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 stack alternating layers, uh, BC or CB, you get dikite. And the disorder can be described by a combination of these two layer types and additional layer translations by B3 similar to the chloride. Um, uh, unfortunately, the uh, direct calculation is hard to do, but um, a, a method was developed in 1991 uh, to calculate uh, such effects uh, by separate treatment of the transitions and uh, the layer pairs, what are repeating in this stack. Of course, we have to uh, consider the stack to be infinitely thick, what is not always right. And uh, here we have uh, the possibility to refine the translations and the probability what are really physically based uh, parameters. Uh, the first modeling software was then extended by a, a least squares algorithm to a Riedfeld program uh, called Diffax Plus, and uh, it was included in the Riedfeld program BGMM by Jörg Bergmann and Christian Ufer uh, later, and so it was made compatible with a uh, conventional program. Uh, if we apply this uh, model, we get nice fits, and we really get uh, probability parameters, um, and we can describe uh, two varieties of uh, kaolinite nicely. Of course, we have no standard, so we do not know if, it's, uh, if these uh, are true values, uh, uh, but uh, this is, makes, able to describe, uh, makes us able to describe uh, natural kaolinites. A very Similar approach, identical approach, can be done for uh, uh, pyrophyllite. Uh, the uh, disorder uh, of uh, pyrophyllite consists in deviations from the ideal 1A stacking, as uh, investigated by Kogura and co-workers, uh, by alternative translations. And so we can refine here the probability of the 1A translations and, for example, the uh, uh, distances and the directions, the length and the directions of the translation vector. Uh, let's go to random stacking faults. Um, in case of random stacking faults, uh, it's like a stack of playing cards, what we are uh, putting on the desktop for uh, mixing, and we have uh, translations by random amplitude or direction. And to do this with this recursive method um, makes a lot of effort. You have to uh, define a lot of meaningless layer par pairs. Um, and so uh, if you try to uh, fit a real uh, uh, turbostolic mineral like a smectite here, saponite, with the ideal structure, completely nonsense came out. Um, there is no way to fit a uh, uh, a smectite pattern by an ideal 1M structure model. Um, a workaround was developed very early in 1994, also with the goal of quantitative phase analysis. Uh, the authors um, made the trick to uh, calculate a bigger cell in the AB direction and manually to delay peaks and to uh, adjust the intensities, and then uh, they have not more a structural model, but a list of peaks, a so-called HKL file. And this HKL file is used for quantification. Um, the disadvantage is that you need poor reference minerals to calibrate this approach. And of course, it's not more entirely a Riedfeld program or a Riedfeld approach because of site occupation factors and structural details are not refinable. But nevertheless, this was... Uh, uh, first working approach uh, for phase quantification of disordered uh, minerals. Um, the idea is uh, to put this more on a structural basis, and again, our reciprocal lattice may help. Uh, the reciprocal lattice of a uh, topostolic mineral consists of infinitely long uh, lattice rods that are con going continuously, and uh, uh, independent from that, uh, a 0, 0, L series, what can be treated conventionally. Uh, and the question is how we can we in, introduce this in a Riedfeld structure model, what needs peaks. Uh, to have peaks, we can, uh, to have enough peaks, we can simply put uh, one layer into an empty cell. Of course, the density is completely nonsense. It, it's 
much too low, but this can be corrected. Doing so, our L is uh, rising to higher numbers by the uh, length what we add here to the empty cell, and we get a, a, a series of deflection spots what merge into a rod. Of course, for the 00L, zero L, we have to correct uh, this. And uh, what we need here is only one broadening parameter to smear these peaks together, and another broadening parameter that uh, can take into account the breadth of the basal peaks. And this method um, works well already if you elongate the cell 10 times. It really uh, can fit uh, nicely the uh, asymmetric HK rods. Um, and very interesting is that you see here the intensity of the background is not background, it is the continuous scattering intensity of this structure, and this is correctly calculated with this model. This model was very successful in phase quantification and is nowadays introduced in a lot of other readfeld programs like uh, MAUD, uh, FullProf, uh, Topaz, and so on. Um, with this approach, you can also do a little bit structure analysis. For example, you can apply this method to uh, uh, fit or to determine lattice parameters with a higher precision than by a manual setting of this peak mark here. And so uh, it was possible to use this to establish a, a correlation between lattice parameters, a new correlation uh, with lattice parameters of smectite and iron in tetraedral and octaedral positions. Um, let's switch to intercertified systems. Um, intercertified systems we can describe to be stacks of layers having different structures and composition. Of course, any um, stack can be considered to be an interstratification, even if you say the same uh, layer is only transisted. So uh, the interstratified uh, model is more or less the most general one. Um, in clay mineralogy, um, we all know that um, we often analyze uh, oriented samples to get pure 00L series, and um, this method is well introduced in uh, uh, clay science to investigate uh, the composition and the structure of mixed layer minerals for example, by new mode Sibylla and other 1D uh, simulating programs. Um, it is possible uh, to tell a Rietfeld code just calculate 00L. So you can uh, apply uh, even, uh, we can investigate even um, with one-dimensional patterns with a Rietfeld method. Um, the advantage uh, there is a, also a disadvantage. The disadvantage is that we have to use this recursive method what considers the stack to be infinitely thick. What is not true, it is uh, uh, in a direct approach, um, the limitations of uh, scattering domains are much uh, more physically based described, but not, this is not possible with the recursive method. But nevertheless, um, uh, we can refine a lot of uh, interesting parameters like uh, per uh, percentages of layers, like uh, uh, degree of ordering, and so on. And uh, the advantage of this uh, full automatic approach is that we are not um, fixed to our experience and skills in, in a manual uh, refinement, so an automatic uh, run will give the same uh, result if you have the same model uh, for all users independent on their skills. And here it is shown that we can use it simply in automatic mode to see that this model is obvious, gives obviously slightly uh, uh, worse results than that, so it, this is a more probable one. Um, However, we know that a one-dimensional pattern does not contain so much information that you can refine all structural details. And uh, this was the reason uh, that uh, Boris Sakharov and co-workers have introduced the idea to employ uh, more than one uh, preparation, so the multi-specimen technique, uh, for their manual or user interactive fitting. 
The idea is that the same structural parameters must be uh, fitted to different uh, uh, preparations and you have to get um, the same result. Here in a Riedfeld refinement, we call this parametric refinement um, and we can employ three patterns, for example, air-dried, uh, glycolated, and a powder pattern in air-dried stage. And you can refine global parameters, uh, what employs a full information, uh, together with local parameters, what uh, describes uh, slightly different models. Um, this uh, highly stabilizes uh, the refinement and uh, helps to uh, get a unique result. Um, at the end of my talk, I would like to uh, discuss a little bit the phase quantification. Um, phase quantification um, can be seen as a dirty business. And um, uh, it is always um, frustrating to see, um, if, if we are honest, uh, how bad our results are in details. And if you are working in a service lab, um, this is really a permanent source of uh, frust frustration. And so the phase quantification is uh, discussed with a lot of emotions. And fortunately, uh, we have today this session, so I can switch all the critical discussions to that. However, um, in the Riedfeld method theoretically needs no calibration and it may be running automatically. And this calibration, this is uh, uh, something like a, a promise of salvation for in the work of uh, uh, phase quantification. It's something like a holy grail, what well, is far away, uh, but um, it is also a motivation and laziness is also a motivation to apply Riedfeld method. Um, the first application of the uh, Riedfeld method in phase quantification was done in 1979 for, qu for quite easy systems. Um, uh, nowadays, a lot of citations of Riedfeld QPA are uh, published, and we can see that uh, in the early 1990s, I think the pioneering work was done in that time. Uh, we should mention that here, uh, real rocks rock materials, and even clays have been started to be analyzed with the Riedfeld method. And it was also uh, uh, connected with first commercial software and with trials to, to refine bauxites. And here are the real pioneers um, uh, in phase analysis of clay minerals. Um, nowadays, uh, the Riedfeld method is quite popular in phase quantification. We can see this, that 60% of the participants of the last Reynolds Cup applied, uh, applied the Riedfeld method, uh, even for clays. And this is quite surprising, as we know how complex this undertaking is. Um, just one example. If we have such a diffraction pattern and this number of phases, the question arises, uh, what parameters should be refined in a phase analysis? And the answer is quite simple. We should refine everything what we do not know and what has an influence uh, on the scale factors. Um, in that case, we refined 217 parameters. And you can make, may, may be sure, uh, you, you can be sure that uh, more than the half of these parameters has been redundant. It could not be refined to the, a reasonable value. But the trick is uh, simply to introduce physically sound models plus a lot of constraints. If we limit and constrain all parameters to uh, values what may have sense, when we can live with this over-parameterization and we get results what are at least good enough to win a Reynolds Cup. <laughs> uh, at the very end, I can uh, go to the conclusions. And uh, one take-home message uh, for the application of the Riedfeld method is 
that we should uh, keep in balance the flexibility of the model with the stability of the refinement. And unfortunately, the number of free parameters and the parameter space, what is more or less unknown, this is, uh, depends from our problem, from our analytical task. We can work only on the other side. And here we should tell the program what we know. We can fix parameters. We can uh, use better models. We can introduce constraints, and we can use more and better data. And this is uh, more or less whole wisdom how to get a, a, a read file refinement successfully. To summarize, um, I think to have demonstrated that the Riedfeld method is alive and contributes significantly to our clay science. Um, I think that new tools like the recursive pattern calculation maybe enable the description of more complex disordered structures of uh, clay minerals in the future, and it also opens new fields of applications in the structural analysis of clay minerals. And um, if we have optimized structure models and stable refinement software, then we can further improve the results of phase quantification uh, for a broad audience, I think so. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And I want uh, to uh, express my thanks to the organizers of this conference, to Christian Ufo for the many years of collaboration to numerous colleagues for support and the stimulation and the encouragement in this work. Thank you very much.